Welcome back to Branchy Today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching VCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. Welcome back to Braintree Today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. On Thursday, Israeli tanks bombarded areas around two hospitals near Gaza City, which was said to be an offensive in targeting Hamas militants. This attack forced displaced people into a new desperate scramble for safe shelter. Gaza health officials said at least 20 killed and 150 wounded as Israeli tanks fired shells in live rounds at people who lined up to receive humanitarian supplies. Also on Thursday in Khan Yunus, a tank fire that hit a United Nations shelter killed at least 12 and injured scores more. When asked about the tank fire, the Israeli mil excuse me, the Israeli army said a thorough review of the operations of the forces in the vicinity is underway, but that they currently ruled out one of its aerial or artillery strikes hitting the facility. The Israeli army is the only force known to have tanks operating in the Gaza Strip. On Wednesday, Russia accused Ukraine of deliberately shooting down a Russian military transport plane that carried 65 captured Ukrainian soldiers involved in a prisoner exchange. According to the Russian Defense Ministry, six Russian crew members and three Russian soldiers had been on the plane that was shot down near the Russian city of Belgorod. Ukraine didn't directly confirm they shot down the plane, nor that Ukrainian prisoners were on board. But after a long pause, the Ukrainian military said it would continue to destroy Russian military transport aircraft it believed were carrying missiles with which to strike Ukraine. Russian officials said the exchange was to take place on Wednesday afternoon at the Kolotilovka border and Ukraine knew a transport plane carrying captured Ukrainian soldiers was expected. Following up on the story of the two Navy SEALs who were missing off the coast of Somalia and then declared dead, one of the SEALs had ties to Massachusetts. Christopher Chambers was from Maryland, but graduated from Westfield High School in Westfield, Massachusetts. He was a member of the swim team there and went on to study at UMass Amherst, where he, comp where he competed for the UMass swim team. He ultimately graduated from the University of Maryland. He then went on to graduate from SEAL team training in 2014. The other SEAL was Nathan Ingram. He was from Texas and graduated from SEAL training in 2019. Hertz, the rental car giant, which has made huge investments into the electric car market in recent years, has decided to cut back. The company will sell off one-third of its electric fleet, totaling about 20,000 cars. They will use this money to purchase gasoline-powered vehicles since electric vehicles have been costing the company too much money. Even though they cost less to maintain, they have higher damage repair costs and also higher depreciation. According to Hertz CEO Stephen Scher, collision and damage repairs on an electric vehicle can cost twice as much as that of a combustion engine vehicle. And EV, price, and EV price declines in the new car market have pushed down the resale value of Hertz used EV rental cars. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration is recalling Bright Farm spinach and salad kits sold in seven U.S. states because they may be contaminated with listeria. The recall became necessary after spinach grown by Bright Farm supplier Element Farms in Pompton Plains, New Jersey, found a positive sample of listeria. The recalled products were sold by retailer Stop and Shop and Wegmans in seven states, including Massachusetts. No illnesses have been reported to date, but shoppers who purchase the recalled products are encouraged to discard them or bring a photo or receipt to their place of purchase for a refund. The products included in the recall were Bright Farms Baby Spinach, Bright Farms Mediterranean Crunch Kit, Bright Farms Chickpea Caesar Crunch Kit, Bright Farms Bacon Ranch Crunch Kit, and Bright Farms Southwest Chipotle. For any questions, call Bright Farms at 866-857-8745. Thanks for watching Braintree Today. We'll be right back with more after the break. Meet James. He was surprised to find out that he has elevated blood pressure, which could turn into high blood pressure. 
so he talked with his doctor about a healthy path to get his numbers down. He quit smoking, which makes a big difference for his overall heart health. He also cut down on salt by watching out for high sodium on food labels and added a 30-minute walk five days a week to his routine. These healthy steps weren't easy, but lowering his blood pressure was worth it. Learn more about his healthy path. Welcome back. On Wednesday morning, a dog was rescued at Smith Beach in Braintree after he plunged through the frozen surface on the river. Around 8.30 a.m., Rupert the dog and his owner were walking along Smith Beach when the ice cracked underneath, plunging him into the icy waters. Crews from Engines 3 and 1 were sent to Edge Hill Road after receiving reports about the dog, who was hanging onto the ice with his front paws. Firefighters Dan Cross put on a wetsuit and rescued Rupert using a rope and lifesaver ring, then carried him back to shore where he was reunited with his owner. A local police canine and his partner are going to be inducted into the National Law Enforcement Hall of Fame. The Massachusetts law enforcement community is adding two new members to its permanent history. The late canine Kit and Officer Billy Cushing are two of the 2024 inductees, receiving the Fox and Hound Canine Foundation Canine Hero Award. The inauguration dinner for the 2024 inductees will be held this spring in Fort Worth, Texas, where a pool of people from 39 states will be honored. Officials from the Canine Kit Foundation said in a statement, quote, Remembering Kit with this distinguished recognition will keep his legacy alive as the foundation moves forward in his memory, end quote. The Town of Braintree's Department of Public Health is reminding residents that January is Radon Action Month. For those unfamiliar with radon, it is a radioactive gas that comes from the ground. It moves up through your foundation and can get trapped inside your home. Nearly one of every 15 homes in the U.S. is estimated to have elevated radon levels that exceed the EPA action guideline. Radon is the leading cause of lung cancer in people who never smoke and the second leading cause of lung cancer cancer overall. Testing the air inside your home is the only way to know if radon is present. For more information on how to get your home tested and understanding your results, contact the Indoor Air Quality Program at 800-723-6695 or email dphiaq.radon at mass.gov. The second ever Lunar New Year Festival was announced at last week's Town Council meeting. The second annual event is being held on Sunday, February 4th to celebrate the Year of the Dragon. The Chinese American Association of Braintree is collaborating with the BHS Asian Student Association to host this year's event at Braintree High School Gymnasium. Residents are invited to attend and enjoy a variety of cultural activities, games, the marketplace, and performances including the traditional lion dances. Admission is free. Check out CAB's Facebook page or their website at caab-ma.org for more information. The Braintree Parks and Recreation Department is now selling tickets for a field trip to see the Boston Celtics play the Detroit Pistons at TD Garden. The event on March 18th is available to residents of all ages and seats will be located in the top shelf bar seating area. The trip will include round trip transportation to and from the garden and buses will depart from Town Hall at 5.30 p.m. Tickets are $90. You can buy them now on the Parks and Rec website at braintreema.myrec.com. The holiday season is officially behind us, meaning plenty of Braintree residents have already taken down their Christmas trees. Town officials say that in Braintree, residents looking to discard their trees can take it to the Plain Street compost site, which accepts them during operating hours. Trees aren't accepted with lights, ornaments, or plastic bags on them, so take just the bare tree to the site. The 225 Plain Street compost site is open Wednesday through Sunday from 7.15 a.m. to 2.45 p.m. through the end of January. Thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. We'll be right back with more stories in the area. It's that time of the year again, flu season. Getting vaccinated against the flu and COVID-19 can help keep you, your family, and your community healthy. You can even get both vaccines at the same time. Visit mass.gov slash flu shot to learn more. Welcome back to Braintree Today. Now let's get right into more stories. After hearing from parents at three different forums, Weymouth School Superintendent Robert Wargo outlined some steps administrators are taking to make the district's schools safer. 
Volunteers will monitor areas of Chapman Middle School, doors will be added to bathrooms, and communication will be increased as part of a plan to improve school security. The school will be working on a sign-up process so parents can volunteer to monitor hallways during school arrival, dismissal, and lunches. Parents will need to complete background checks and an orientation so they understand the role and expectations of the work. Security aid will be hired along with the installation of accordion-style grates so bathrooms can be shut down as needed. Police seized over $70,000 in U.S. and foreign currency, foreign identification documents, and stolen jewelry after a traffic stop in Quincy on Saturday. The release from Quincy police said an officer saw a Land Rover headed in the wrong direction on Stratton Way in North Quincy and stopped it on West Guantam Street. The driver, who was an Irish national, didn't have a license and is thought to be part of an Irish traveler scam. The news release stated, quote, These scams usually start with an unsolicited visit to someone's home by a, by a contractor stating they have leftover materials and the person keeps finding more items to repair on your property, end quote. A nationwide blood shortage is being intensified by severe winter weather that forced hundreds of blood drive cancellations across the country. The American Red Cross in Massachusetts is asking residents on the South Shore to roll up their sleeves to give blood or platelets to help the shortage. In an emergency appeal last week, the Red Cross said since early January about 265 blood drives across 27 states were canceled due to weather. This left more than 8,000 blood and platelets donations to go uncollected and has left hospitals in short supply of blood. To help, residents around Braintree, Quincy, Randolph and Weymouth are encouraged to give blood locally. Some of the places to do that include the Quincy Sons of Italy at 120 Quarry Street, the Weymouth Blood Donation Center at 208 Main Street, RICC at 128 Pleasant Street in Randolph, and Stetson Place at 541 Main Street in Weymouth. As the 2024 Block Island Film Festival approaches in May, a 35-minute documentary produced by the office of Mayor Thomas Koch has been, has been selected to appear in the event. City of Generals, Quincy's modern-day Patriots, is a flag-waving tribute to seven homegrown generals who assumed positions of high command starting in the mid-1940s. City records state that aside from the co-director's salaries, the city paid $600 to Apple Car Productions to edit the film. According to Municipal Finance Director Eric Mason, donations from local business leaders paid for the bulk of production costs. The documentary captures the dedication ceremony of the General's Bridge and Park in September 2021 and is in interwoven with interviews, photographs, and images of Quincy neighborhoods and monuments. Four Massachusetts employers have landed on the 2023 Healthiest 100 Workplaces in America list. Employers are evaluated in six categories including culture and leadership, foundational components, strategic planning, communications marketing, programming and interventions, and reporting and analytics. In Massachusetts, the following employers made the list, including Saul Medical Corporation in Chelmsford, which came in at number 55, Eversource Energy in Westwood, which came in at number 69, the University of Massachusetts Chan Medical School in Worcester, which was at number 73, and the College of Holy Cross in Worcester, which came in at number 91. Thanks for watching Braintree Today. We'll be right back with more in entertainment. He left unattended. Place them on a stable base three feet from combustibles. Their use is not recommended within a bedroom, but if you must do so, place a smoke detector on the ceiling within the bedroom. Plug a portable space heater directly into the outlet, avoiding extension cords. Thus, do not use lamp cords or power strips for this purpose. Are portable, unvented, propane, and oil-filled heating appliances safe to use within a residence? No. Massachusetts prohibits their use. These heaters produce asphyxiant gases. These gases can render an occupant incapacitated or dead. Please consider your safety during these upcoming colder months. Thank you for doing so. Welcome back to Braintree Today. Today in entertainment, we have three new TV show recommendations for you to watch, but first some news in the streaming world. 
the basic Netflix subscription that costs $11.99 per month in the US is being retired. For those who have been clinging on to the basic $11.99 ad-free plan, your time to switch is coming. With Netflix axing the basic plan, users will now have three options to choose from. These include the standard with ads for $6.99, the standard ad-free for $15.49, and the premium for $22.99. The basic plan, which was phased out last summer for new and returning users in the US is currently only available to those who were already subscribed to that option. Netflix said its plan to retire the basic plan in more countries, starting with Canada and England in the second quarter of 2024. Now here are some TV show recommendations to help you get through the weekend. First, Echo is a mini-series that follows Maya Lopez who must face her past reconnect with her Native American roots, and embrace the meaning of family and community if she ever hopes to move forward. The show stars Alakwa Cox, and you can watch Eco ne Echo now on Disney+. Next, Fool Me Once follows Maya Stern, who is trying to come to terms with the brutal murder of her husband, Joe. However, when Maya installs a nanny cam to keep an eye on her young daughter, she is shocked to see her husband in her house. The show stars Michelle Keegan, and you can watch Fool Me Once now on Netflix. Finally, Boy Swallows Universe takes place in the 1980s in Brisbane, Brisbane Australia. The show follows Eli Bell, who in a in a room below his house answers a red telephone and begins a journey that will break his heart before ending it. The show stars Travis Fimmel and Phoebe Tonkin. You can watch Boy Swallows Universe now on Netflix. That'll do it for news today. Remember, if you're a customer of Verizon, you can watch Bcam TV in high definition on channel 2128. I'm Martha Constantinides, and thank you for watching Brainsheet Today on Bcam TV. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time.